to do a broom burn test pattern. I'm gonna make sure all of my down pressures are in the light position. I'm going to turn on my curb broom and put it in the down position and turn on the rotate. My main broom, I'm gonna rotate it. I'm gonna put my main broom conveyor height in the down position and my conveyor rotate in the forward position. This machine's set up with dual brooms, so I'm gonna turn on my street side broom as well. Now I'm gonna push my trans or sweep transport mode switch to activate the brooms. This machine is set up with tilt as well, so I'm gonna change my tilt. to about five degrees. I'm gonna run my RPMs up to about 1500. And I'm just gonna let the broom scuff the ground. Once you've run the machine in place for 10 to 15 seconds, pull the machine forward and look to see the pattern on the ground. The main broom itself should be burning at four to six inches width all the way across. It should be equal. You should have four inches on this side and four inches on that side. Four inches for everyday sweeping, six inches for heavy sweeping, millings, uh, wet sand, uh, lots of heavy debris. The curb brooms themselves on the curb side, you should be coming in at about 10 o'clock, curve around to about three o'clock. This one's just a shade heavy. On our machine, we're running our piranha brushes and everything's brand new, so that's, that's acceptable. On the street side, I should be sweeping from about nine o'clock, nice half moon in to about two o'clock. I need to add just a little bit of down pressure to that to make it perfect. Now, your curb brooms should overlap your main broom pattern. On the inside of my foot is my main broom. If you go straight forward, I need to overlap by two to three inches so that the debris will come from the outside of the curb and get drug in front of that main broom. 